Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. It can be found on page 34 of the Pew, New Testament of the Pew Bible. Mark 1, 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like, descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tested by Satan, and he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. Since as far back as the second century, Christians have set aside the weeks leading up to Easter as a special time for spiritual reflection and preparation. These weeks are now known as the liturgical season of Lent, and its name, Lent, comes from a Middle English word that means springtime. You know, often by the time we get to February and March, we've grown pretty tired of the cold and the mud and the day after day of gray. Staying positive and gracious during this time gets to be difficult. And I think particularly in this long tail of the pandemic, we are weary. So just like creation prepares for the greening of the trees and the birth of new life, we use Lent to prepare ourselves as well. The whole purpose of Lent is to look inward and ask, how is it with my soul? How do I need to tend to my soul so I'm ready to receive the gift of new life that comes with Easter morning? So for that reason, our Lenten theme this year is soul tending. From embracing God's love for us to releasing what causes us harm, sharing God's grace to creating new connections, each sermon will focus on some aspect of caring for our souls. And throughout the series, we will turn to the poetry of Mary Oliver, whose work so tenderly explores Christian themes with a poet's eye for beauty. So we begin this week with themes of wilderness and identity. Lent is 40 days long in recognition of the 40 days that Jesus spent in the wilderness preparing for his ministry. Much like Jesus entering into a wilderness of wild beasts and Satan's temptations, we all have periods in our lives that feel like wilderness for us. To be in the wilderness may mean feeling lost and alone, confused or disoriented, threatened by what is around you, and frightened that you may never get home again. Many life experiences lead us to the wilderness, the loss of a loved one, a divorce, moving to a new place, finishing school, selling the family home, 
global pandemics. These all are changes in our lives when a source of stability is taken away from us and we're unsure what comes next. In the wilderness, we need a sense of security and a boost to our self-worth. So what I want to focus on today is what happens to Jesus just before he enters the wilderness. It's a striking scene. Jesus is baptized by John the Baptist, and as he comes out of the water, the Holy Spirit descends from above to enter him, and the voice of God declares, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus' identity as God's own, loved beyond measure, is proclaimed aloud, celebrated, and affirmed by the Holy Spirit. And of course, the same is true for us, though we often forget it. Each of us is a beloved child of God. Each of us has received the gift of God's love and grace, strength and wisdom through the power of the Holy Spirit. When the wilderness looms before us, we are already prepared with all that we need as Satan tempts and wild beasts circle round because God has claimed us and never leaves us. Again, look at Jesus. He's there in the wilderness, but he is not alone. Angels wait on him. God is there to protect him, to care for him, to strengthen him, to guide him. No matter how Jesus may have suffered in the wilderness, no matter how angry or frightened or doubtful or despairing he might have been, God never left him. We'll hear the same theme in the three psalms that the choir will be singing shortly. Each of these psalms acknowledges that life is hard sometimes. And the psalmist doesn't shy away from lament and anger. In Psalm 13, we hear the psalmist cry, How long, Lord? How long will you hide your face from me? Yet despite the pain the psalmist expresses, he returns to finding assurance and comfort in God's steadfast faithfulness. We hear it in Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. And in Psalm 121, I lift up my eyes to the hill, hills. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. It is no wonder that African Americans have found strength and hope in the Psalms ever since being taken from their homes and forced into slavery. There's one other thing that stands out to me in this scripture passage about Jesus and baptism and wilderness. When he returns from the wilderness, at the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus cries out, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe in the good news. As we enter this season of Lent, we're invited to reclaim our identities as children of God, to co find comfort in knowing that God is always there for us, and to align our souls with God, our Creator. I believe that is what Jesus means when he says, repent. In scripture, the word repent means to change your heart and mind, a second meaning is to turn away from. So Lent is a time of reflecting on what change we may need to make to move closer to God and what we might need to turn away from. What is so beautiful is that when we turn away from something, inevitably we are turning toward something else, something new, precious, or grace-filled. This is what I find so profound in Mary Oliver's poem, Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting. 
You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese high in the clean blue air are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over, announcing your place in the family of things. I think it's interesting how almost matter-of-fact Mary Oliver is about despair. You have yours and I have mine. But while we're, we're doing that, we're missing the unfolding of God's creation the beautiful world that God delights in, whatever we carry with us in guilt or shame or regrets or hopelessness or helplessness leads us to miss the tremendous world of sunshine and rain, of mountains and deep trees, of wild geese crying out as they make their way north. This is where we belong. We have our place here, in creation. And this is the place where God watches over us, so deeply loves us, and waits for us to turn and claim the promise of life as God's own beloved. May it be so. Amen. Mm -hmm.